welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make the color block baskets. These are fantastic baskets and the pattern gives you instructions for how to make this in the small size and the large size, super, super big. We are going to focus on the smaller size in today's video, but all you will do is expand out from the instructions that I will give you in the video to make the larger size and you'll have no problem. This is a free pattern over on redheart.com. You can find the link to the free pattern and all of the materials right down there in the video description box below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say to let other people know you enjoyed this video. Go ahead, download your free pattern, join me back here, and we will get started on this super cute little basket. I don't know about all of you, but I have seen these crocheted baskets all over Pinterest and I think they are adorable and the perfect home accessory. So I was thrilled when Red Heart said that they had a pattern coming out and they wanted me to teach a video on how to make one of these baskets. So now you can make your own. This basket is made using two different colors of Red Heart with Love. The smaller basket requires three skeins of each color. The larger basket requires six skeins of your base color and three skeins of the top portion of your basket. Along with the yarn, you need a size K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. You will also need a bent tip tapestry needle to weave in your ends and a good pair of scissors, that way you can snip the yarn tails as you weave them in. Now that you have the materials and the pattern, let's go ahead and jump in and get started on this really great basket. To make this basket, you need to hold three strands of yarn together throughout the entire project. That means you will pull a strand from each one of the balls of the same color and work all of your stitches. It's going to make them thicker and make this project go a lot faster. Once you have all three strands pulled out, you will begin with a slip knot. Place the tail of all three strands in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Once you cross over, turn your hand over, go underneath the front loop, grab the back loop, and pull that off. I now have created a slip knot. Notice I'm still holding my fingers in there because we're using the three strands. It might get a little tricky here just to get used to it at the start. Take your hook, stick it into that slip knot, and just separate the tail and the working yarn apart. And that tightens up that slip knot right there on the hook. Once you have the slip knot on the hook, we want to do a chain three. To do a chain stitch, you take your hook and you wrap it around your yarn just like so. When you come back up, you wanna make sure you have all three strands right there on your hook. And when I pull that through, I wanna make sure I'm coming through all three strands on the um, hook itself in that chain. Now, we do not count the loop on our hook as a stitch, so that first one I just did, that's one. So we need two more. Take my hook, go around and back up, and then pull that through. There's two, and there's three. Now I will go ahead and I will join with a slip knot to the very first one here to form a ring. So I come back over here to this first stitch, the first chain. I'm gonna go into the back leg of it just because I find that easier. Yarn over my hook, pull that yarn over through that stitch, and then pull it through the one that's on my hook. So that is a slip knot. And what I've done here, you can see there's this circle. That's actually the ring that we will begin to work these stitches. From this point forward, we will work in the round for the rest of the basket. We will also keep the work continually going in the direction we're working. We will not turn our work, okay? So if you wanted to take a marker and mark this as the right side of your fabric, you absolutely could, that, could do that, but I don't think we need to do that at this time. The next part of the instructions for round one right side say to go ahead and do a chain one 
and then we will put six single crochet into this ring. So simply go into the middle of this ring, find the middle portion. So like if I put my finger right there, that's the middle portion. I'll go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So that's one single crochet and I need six of them. So I will do that. There's the second one. Third, four, five, and six. When you finish with the six single crochet, you will slip stitch into the first single crochet. So remember we have this chain one, and then here's our single crochet. So I am going to put my hook directly into that single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the one that's on my hook. So now I have six single crochet all in the round at this point. For round two, we will begin with a chain one, and then we are going to put two single crochet into each one all the way around. By doing that, we will now have 12 single crochet, and it's the first part of our increases that we are doing for the base of our basket. So we've chained one, and we will literally put two single crochets into each single crochet. So there's one, I'm gonna go into the same stitch and work another one. Move to the next, there's one, and there's the second one. So now I have four, right? So I go to the next. There's one and a second one. There's one and the second one. So that's eight. There's one and the second one. There's ten. There's one and the second one, there is 12. Once you get the 12, you will then go ahead and slip stitch to the first single crochet. So I go to the first single crochet and make sure that you have all three strands. Again, it just takes a little practice to get used to it. And then slip stitch that closed. You'll notice that your rounds are nice and snug, and that's what we want. We don't want our basket to have a lot of holes in it. It's a pretty solid fabric. So you wanna make sure the hook you're using is getting you a really nice, solid fabric all the way around. You'll notice on round three that the next set of the instructions have you do chain one, and then there's a bracket. Whenever you see instructions written inside of a bracket, that's a clue for you to know that everything that's written inside that bracket, you're going to do for the total number of times written outside of the bracket. So for example, round three starts with a chain one, and then in the bracket it says two single crochet in the next stitch. So here's the next stitch. I'm going to do two single crochet. So there's one and two. And then it says to do a single crochet in the next stitch. So there's one right there. So I've done an increase and then just one plain single crochet. And I will do that a total of six times. And when I get to the end here, I will have increased a total of six stitches. You'll notice that as we keep going round and round and round, increasing the base of our, of our basket, we will have um, an increased number of singular single crochets between all of our increased single crochets, okay? That's how the base of our basket is gonna get larger and larger. So let's go ahead and do this one five more times because we just did it once. So I will put one and two single crochets in one and then one single crochet in the next. Two single crochets in one. One single crochet in the next.
When you get to the end, you can always pause and go back and count just to make sure you have the right number of stitches. I like to find the V on the top of my rounds and use those as my counting portions. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, which is exactly what I want. So at the end of my round here, I join with the slip stitch one more time to the first single crochet. You're not joining to the chain one, remember, you're going to the single crochet, and you join with that slip stitch. Hopefully this is starting to make a little bit of sense. Let's work on round four together, and then let's take a look at the rest of the pattern. Round four has us begin with the chain one, just like before, and you'll see that there's a bracket, and it says to put two single crochet in the next stitch, so there's one, and there's two, so that's my increase. And then I'll put a single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one, and then this is the next one over. So there's two. So I've used up three stitches, but I've created four. I will do that a total of six times all the way around, just like before. And notice that this time, after my increase, there are two singular stitches. In subsequent rows, you will now have three single crochets between your increases, then four, then five, then six, and so on and so forth, depending on how large you want the base of your basket to be. Let's go ahead and finish this round. I just finished the first bracket, so let's do the bracket repeat. So I will go into the next stitch, put two single crochets into one, so there's my increase, Oops, I missed one of those strands. Make sure you always get all three strands. And there's my two singles. So that's two times I've done the bracket. So there's one and two. One single and two singles. That's three times I've done the bracket. One single and two single. Get some more yarn here. You'll notice I changed the way I'm holding my hook. It's actually very difficult for me to crochet this tightly. It hurts the inside of my thumb, um, like it hurts right here. So when that happens for me, I will change up how I hold my hook and just play around with a little bit. So if you have those same sort of uh, issues, maybe change up the way you hold your hook and give that a try. I'm at the end of my round and I will join with the slip stitch just like before. And I could go back and recount my stitches to make sure, but I know I have the right number of stitches. Hopefully you're getting it by this point. You can really see where there's an increase and there's a singular stitch in between each increase and that grows depending on the number of rounds you're doing. If you're making the small basket, you will repeat, or not repeat, you will work the instructions through round 10. If you're making the larger basket, you will work the instructions through round 14. I'm gonna work on this a little bit and get a couple rounds in, and then I will move on to the next part of the instructions so that you know how you move past the base of the basket. Okay, I didn't go very far. I just went through round five because my hand's really starting to hurt and I wanna make sure that I'm not using up the entire video time just crocheting a circle. So let's go ahead and move on to the sides of the basket. Now, this entire base of the basket, we have been working in rounds to work our increases to get the base of the basket as uh, large as we want it to. Now we want the sides of the basket to begin to come up, right? To grow from the base. So what we do is we will crochet around this entire base without working increases and we will work in the back loop only. That is gonna give us this really great 
open loop right there. Can you see that really great open loop? And that means that when the base of your basket lays down, this kind of acts as a place where the basket sort of folds, okay? It just looks really good and finished. So let's go ahead and let's work through the back loop only. You will go ahead and chain one, and working in the back loop only, you will single crochet all the way around your circle. So I'm working only in the back loop. You see that front loop right there? I'm going in the back loop and I will single crochet. So for me, I will have a total of 30 single crochet all the way around when I'm done. If you're following the instructions for the small basket, you will have a total of 60. If you're following the instructions for the large basket, you will have a total of 84. You'll see here that as you're working around, this front loop that we're not using is the part that becomes that nice little ridge on the basket. It's a really great design feature and it just makes the turn from the base to the body of the basket really nice and um, uniform and easy and simple. So this is a nice little touch done by the beautiful designer Heather Ladinsky. She is fabulous. You can check out more of Heather's patterns on redheart.com. She does a lot of really wonderful patterns for Red Heart. I love being able to teach her patterns on these videos. I'm going to get all the way around here to the end so that you can see the slip stitch. And then what's going to happen once we get past this portion is we will continue to work in the round, but we won't be working any increases like we did on the base. We will simply be doing single crochets all the way around. And when it's time to change colors, you'll know when that is based on the instructions. And it is as simple as just changing colors when you get to the slip stitch. So here I am almost to the end of my round and I'm going to go back and count just because I, I think I'm at the end. I might have one more stitch right there, but I want to make sure. So again, I'm just going to say that's my chain one. So here's my single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. See, I have one more. It's always good to go back and count, especially when you're working in rounds like this. Don't um, just be like, ah, you know what, I'm good. Always go back and count just to make sure. Now I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch just like I've been doing before. And you can already begin to see that my base, it wants to cup up on itself, right? It's already beginning to take shape, which is what we want, right? Now these next rows that we are going to work with this same color without any increases, we will work them just like we did the base where we will go through the entire stitch itself. We are not going to work only in the back loop, okay? You will go into the entire stitch. However, you will not be working increases like you did the base. You're just going to be single crocheting all the way around, which means your stitch count is not going to change. The instructions say that you're supposed to do this particular round for five rounds if you're making the small basket and 19 rounds if you're making the larger basket. Once you read the, reach the number of rounds you plan on doing for the sides of your basket in this color, it will be time to change colors. And that's where I'm going to get to next so I can show you how to change to the top of your basket color. Welcome back. I have worked five rounds on my little tiny basket that I'm making here and it's time for me to change colors. What you'll notice here is I'm at the end of my round and I've gone ahead and I've cut my yarn leaving at least six inches because I like to have that much to be able to weave in later. And I will grab the yarn I'm going to use for the top of my basket. Again, I wanna make sure I hold together three strands of yarn. So I've got three strands of the really pretty Erin color of the With Love. And for me, I like to match up the tail length to what I just cut off because then I make sure everything is about the same length. And when I put my hook into the stitch where I'm gonna do my slip stitch, I will yarn over with my new yarn, 
pull that through the slip stitch and pull it through the loop that's on my hook. What that does, it is it allows for the color change to happen right here without interrupting this stitch and the new color is on my hook ready to be worked. So the instructions now say that we will go ahead and we will chain one with this new color and then single crochet in the same stitch as the join. So there is our join and I will single crochet in the same stitch as my join. Now I'll go ahead and single crochet in each stitch around and join with the slip stitch right there. So it's just like what we've been doing before, only now I have a brand new color to look at, which is exciting because it kind of makes you feel like you're making some serious progress on this really great basket. Um, I know that one of the questions that I have received regarding this basket is, could I make this in stripes? Absolutely. Could you make it in one color? Absolutely. You could do anything you want as far as the colors. Uh, if you want to make sure that your basket, though, is the same size as the sample baskets, just make sure you're still working the same number of rows as written in the pattern, but change colors more often or less often, but maintain the same number of rows, okay? So that's one way you could really change this basket up and make it your, your own. Now, Another way, obviously, is very similar to what I'm doing. I'm just making mine super small. So I made the base of my basket smaller. I made the sides of my basket smaller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tiny candy basket that I think would be super cute for holiday gifts, especially maybe for like teachers or something where they could um, put little uh, maybe Jolly Ranchers or candy treats in their little basket on their desk. Or maybe you want to put, you know, something very <laughs> a quintessential teacher and put a apple in the little basket, maybe with a little thing of like caramel sauce and have a candy apple. I don't know, something fun, just something a little different uh, that you could work up for a quick gift. But I will make sure that the instructions for this little basket that I'm working on will be on my website, marleybird.com. You'll find a link to that in the video description box below. I'll also put a little link to it in that little I button right there. So that way you can get the exact number of stitches and rows I did for my little basket I'm doing here if you want to make a little candy basket um, for your first basket. And so here I am close to the end. I am going to go ahead and count my stitches. I want to make sure. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And I will join with a slip stitch here. And I want to make sure I join to the single crochet that's in the same color that I started with. Give it a good pull. Give that a good pull. You could pull your tail, make sure that's all tight. And now I have this really cool second color. Now you have this really great second color added to your basket. If you're working on the basket from the pattern, you will work in this second color for another 10 rounds if you're making the smaller basket, and you'll work it for another six rounds if you're making the larger basket. For my little tiny candy basket, I think I will work one more round of my secondary color, and then we will jump into the handles. So let me get to that point, and you get to the point on yours as well. Hit pause, hit a marker, do whatever you need to do. Get your basket up to where it's time to work the handles. Handles. To make the handles of this basket, it's as easy as working a set number of stitches, chaining stitches, and then skipping the same number of stitches on the side of your basket as you chained. The following rows, you'll go back and instead of working into those skip stitches from the body of your basket, you'll work around or into those chains, thus leaving a nice little opening. The instructions for the basket handle have you begin with the chain one and then single crochet in the first 10 for the small basket or 14 for the larger basket stitches. Then you will chain 10 or chain 14 for the larger size 
skip that same number of stitches and then single crochet in the next 20 stitches or 28 stitches depending on the size you're making. For this little small basket I'm doing, of course I'm not going to use the same numbers as written in the pattern, but uh, the technique that I will be using will be exactly what you will use, only you will have different numbers, okay? So just work along with me, only use the numbers as indicated for the size you're making. For my little basket, I will start off with a chain one, and then I will do five single crochets. Two, three, four, and five. Now it's time for us to create our little opening for the handles. We do that by chaining the number of stitches as indicated in the pattern. For me, I am gonna do a chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, because I chained five, I'm also going to skip five single crochets from the body of my bag. So skip one, two, three, four, five. In the next one, that's where I will continue on with my single crochets. Remember, you're using the numbers as indicated in the pattern for the size you're making. I will now do a single crochet in the next 10 single crochet. So there's two, three. Now that I've done 10, it's time to do my second handle. And you'll notice it's directly opposite my first handle. So I will start off with the chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I will skip five. One, two, three, four, five. In the next one, I will work a single crochet and then finish off with single crochets to the end, which it'll be a total of five. the end of the round, you join with a slip stitch just like you've been doing all along. And at this point, you now have little handles that are getting started. How cute is that, right? At this point, for my little tiny basket, I could be done, but it really would finish it off if I did another round encasing those chain stitches and making that handle look really finished. Plus, that's the way the pattern's written, so let's go ahead and do that. If you want to follow along with the pattern, that is great. But essentially what you're doing is chaining one and you will single crochet over to where your chain stitches are. Okay, so I'm going to single crochet over to where my chain stitches are. Once I get there, the pattern wants us to work the same number of single crochets as we did chains into that entire chain space. The, the designer does not want you to put those stitches in the chain. Having said that, if you want to put the stitches in the chain, you absolutely could. But for me, I totally agree with the designer. If you remember, I only did five chains, so I will place five single crochet around this chain, and I am simply going into that entire space and working single crochets. It's three, and four, and five. Once I've completed the same number of single crochets around the chains, I move on and I do a single crochet to the next set of chains. And I will repeat the entire process. So I will work single crochets around those chains. And I am placing the same number of single crochets as I did chains. Makes it really easy for you to not uh, mess up and do the wrong amount. You'll know exactly where you are. Simply follow the stitches all the way to that point. I'm here to my second opening. I will place five single crochets around my chain five space here. There's three, four, and five five and then I carry on and I will work my single crochets into the single crochets on the side of my little tiny basket here or the single crochets on your basket until I get to the end and I will join with a slip stitch. I think that's only four. One, two, three. Nope, that's five. 
join with a slip stitch. And look at that, look how cute this little tiny handle is. There's a handle on the opposite side right there. And it's a cute little, look at that little tiny, look at that, isn't that gonna be the cutest little candy basket? Oh my gosh, that is adorable. Now the instructions say to do one more round of single crochets around the basket. So if you're making the small basket or the large basket and you wanna follow the instructions exactly, do one more round of single crochet. For my little tiny basket here, I like the idea of doing a round of crab stitch. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So this is a variation, this is not written in the pattern for the baskets, this for the color block baskets, but it will be written for the little tiny candy dish basket, okay? So um, let me show you how to do the crab stitch. For the crab stitch, you simply chain one, and then you come back to the stitch that's behind the chain one, and go into it, yarn over, and when you pull that yarn over up, you wanna make sure it's in front of the loop that was on your hook, okay? So when you pull that up, it's in front of the loop that was on your hook, yarn over, draw through all of those. Come to the next stitch behind, Yarn over, pull up. I'm gonna move this loop so you can see. When I pull that up, the loop I pull up is in front of or closest to the hook edge of my hook. And yarn over and draw through all of those. Come to the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, and continue on. And I will do this all the way around the basket. And what I love about this little technique is that it creates a really nice finishing touch to this basket. When you get to the end, you will simply go into that last stitch, just like you've been doing all along, okay? You will cut your yarn. I always leave four to six inches. Pull that through and then just weave in your tail. And look how great that little finishing touch is, right? It's just a cute little finishing touch. It's called the crab stitch or a reverse single crochet. And I just think it looks like a cute little finishing touch. Again, that is not on the original basket pattern, but I wanted to add it to my little, my little candy dish right here, right? This little candy basket. Oh, that is just, isn't that adorable? I mean, seriously, that is so cute. The last thing to do now is to weave in your ends. So I'm gonna show you the really quick way to weave in your ends. To weave in your tails, I like to take all three strands, and if I can, using my bent tip tapestry needle, I will put all three strands through the eye of the needle. Once I've done that, I go ahead, I'm going to weave this through so it's on the inside of my little basket here and working on the inside. So let me flip this inside out. I am simply going to take my yarn and I'm just weaving it straight down I'm threading it through the stitches and the actual yarn fibers. Pull my needle through. Make sure as I pull it, like this edge here isn't pulling down, it's still nice and even. Now I'm gonna cross over just a little ways and come back up. Not all the way to the top, because I don't want it to show up here at the very top. I'm gonna pull these through all the way up, hopefully. All right. And then one last time, just so it doesn't come undone, going back down the way I came up. Once I do that, I feel like this is secure enough, especially for a simple little basket, to go ahead and snip off my tail, and that is secure. Now these ends, I can do something very similar. I'm gonna take the, th the white ones first, and just like before, I will thread all three if I can, directly into my bent tip tapestry needle. If I can't do all three, I could always just readjust and do one at a time, but I like to just bust out all three if I can for a big project like this. Now, working through the stitches this direction, I am going to just thread this through 
those back legs, see how those are the, the V's, those are like the back leg of those stitches. I'm gonna thread it through this direction. Get that all the way through. Make sure as I'm pulling it, I'm not making it so that I'm having any puckers anywhere. Let's get that yarn through. Okay, good, good, looks good. And now I will come back the same direction, only I wanna make sure I skip over a little bump right there. And when I come back through, I should be able to pull this and it's going to lock in on itself. Look how that yarn locks in on itself. It's nice and secure. I can snip that nice and close. Do the same thing with the other color. The same thing down here too, just weave in your end. Once all your ends are woven in, you are ready to put this basket right next to your fireplace, gift it to a friend, or heck, maybe you're doing a craft fair. I guarantee you these baskets are a hit at the craft fairs. I mean, look at this, this thing is huge. And people love these things, just even sit next to their chair to put their yarn in. You can see back here behind me, I took the small one, I put some yarn inside of that. Those are three full skeins of Red Heart with Love, just to give you an idea of how large it is. Um, this cute little thing here, look, it's I could use it for my crochet hooks. It's about the same height as my crochet hooks. Oh my God, this is so cute, I love this. Uh, if you want this pattern for the exact instructions for what I did, check out marleybird.com. For the basket pattern, check out redheart.com. Both of those links are right down there in the video description box below. Hopefully you enjoyed this color block basket video tutorial and you'll join the uh, many subscribers here to the Marley Bird YouTube channel so that way you'll be the first to know whenever there is a new video released. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. The pattern for the mini candy basket is available at MarleyBird.com. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm sure there are other videos here that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check out some of my knitting and crochet videos, as well as some of my crafting videos. You will love them, I promise. If you hit subscribe, you'll be up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.